Okay, this video is on Unix editors, that is uh, text editors that you may find and use on Unix machines. Um, some of these, um, one that I'll talk about in detail is VI, which is referred to as the visual editor. That's where the VI comes from. Um, there is something called Vim, where somebody took the functionality of VI and quote, improved it. So Vim stands for VI improved. Um, some Unix machines have a editor called Pico, which is referred to as the Pine Composer. Um, and I'll go off on a tangent here and tell you what the Pine Composer is or how it came to be. So a lot of Unix commands are kind of plays on words or kind of um, funny things. So years ago, one of the first electronic mail programs was called ELM, uh, E -L -M, and it was an abbreviation for electronic mail. Uh, somebody took ELM, the source code, which was open source, and they made it better. And it was University of Washington, and they needed a, a name for their new and improved editor. So since ELM is a kind of tree, uh, they called it PINE. But in reality, what PINE stands for is PINE is no longer ELM. Um, so new source code would come out from University of Washington they would make changes call it pine when a new version of Elm came out they would change it and have put their changes in and it was pine so at some point in time they got tired of repeatedly putting their changes in so they took a copy of Elm modified it to be pine and then used that as their base code to, to go forward um, so pine had a functionality of composing an email message and it had a nice full screen composer window that you were allowed to do that so people complained it's like how come email has this really nice editor but yet when we're at the command line we have to use VI um, so what happened is the people at University of Washington uh, ripped out the code for the composer part of the email system and they made it its own separate program um, and called it Pico. Like I said, that stands for Pine Composer. So Pico was free for years. And I was kind of shocked um, when they started charging for Pico. Uh, it's not a lot of money. I want to think it's like 10, 15 bucks. But they started charging for it. And Unix is usually a huge open source free software type community. So what happened when University of Washington started charging for Pine and Pico? Um, somebody came out with a program called Nano and just like Pine is no longer Elm, uh, Nano stands for Nano's Another Editor. And basically what it is is it's a Pine, I'm sorry, a Pico clone that's supposedly better and has the name Nano. Now, you're free to use whatever ever editor you want. Um, when I taught Unix system administration, uh, and some of my students that were in the time of my Perl class might possibly end up in my Unix sysadmin class, I would tell them they might as well go ahead and bite the bullet and learn VI because I was going to force them to learn VI in the Unix system in class. And if they didn't want to, to do that, then they could use one of the, the simpler editors. So, you know, the same thing kind of applies. I, I currently don't teach the Unix system in classes, but if you think you might take them, your instructor may require you to use VI uh, because that's the editor that's going to come on all Unix machines, come pre-installed. Uh, 
you might want to use VI. If you don't want to use VI, that, that's fine. Uh, you know, the second suggestion would be to use Nano. So I'm going to talk a little bit about VI. You'll have one homework assignment on VI. And then from that point forward, you can use that to create your programs or you can use Nano. Uh, the other way, not the best way in the world, not highly recommend against this, is to do the editing on your desktop or laptop machine and then uh, use a program like SFTP to transfer the file up to the server you're going to be running your Python programs on. So like I said previously, VI is an abbreviation for Visual Editor. As I've been pronouncing it, it is pronounced VI. If you get the original VI manual that was created by AT&T in the early 70s, that was pretty much the first page of the manual which was VI is pronounced VI. It's not the VI editor and you might have to think about this for a second but it's not the six editor. Uh, it is VI. And in the Unix community you could go to a job interview and say oh I had these Unix system in classes I had a Python class uh, you know, this are things we did. Oh, I know how to use the Vi editor. And that's going to be kind of a negative because the person's going to be like, if you don't even know the name or how to pronounce the editor, how well do you really know the editor? Vi is a full screen editor. It has two major modes. That is insert mode and command mode. Uh, when you're in insert mode, things you're typing are being inserted into the text file. When you're in command mode, anything you're typing is being interpreted as a VI command. When you first start VI, you start out in command mode where you can issue commands or move around. Uh, when you get to the point of your program where you're ready to, for example, add more lines to your code or um, add some functionality, uh, you, you would need to get into insert mode. And the way you get into insert mode is by issuing a command that puts you in insert mode. There are a lot of these, but I and A for insert and append are probably two of the most common ways. And then a lot of times I use open, which opens up a line. Um, so it puts a blank line after the line your own and puts you in insert mode. When you're in insert mode, when you need to go back to command mode for whatever reason, you get into command mode by pressing the escape key. Um, typically, you're going to invoke VI with the command VI space file name. If that file name exists, uh, that will take the contents of the file and take it into the VI editor. If that file doesn't exist, it will go ahead and have the effect of creating that file and giving it the specified file name. So it's kind of good to get that out of the way. So if you say VI space program2.py, it's going to create a new file if one doesn't already exist, name program2.py. Another common way to get into VI when you're a programmer is you might run your program and it may say, hey, there's an error on line 44. So you're going to want to go into VI and instead of moving line by line or page by page and kind of searching for where line 44 is, you can use this syntax, which is you can add an argument that says plus and then a line number. So in the example I just gave you, you would say VI space plus 44 whatever file. And presumably this file exists. It would be loaded into VI and VI would position on the screen and put your cursor on line 44. So I'm going to be supplying you with something called the VI Quick Reference Guide. 
it is going to have I think it's three cram full pages of VI commands but I can probably teach you 10 or 15 things um, that will make you proficient enough that you can easily edit your program, modify your program, etc. So the first thing that you typically talk about when you're learning about VI is moving around the screen or moving around within the file. Uh, there are different ways you can do it. Uh, the first way is one character at a time. Uh, a lot of times your arrow keys will work, but in the beginning when VI was first created in the you know, late 60s, early 70s, keyboards did not have new numeric keypads or arrow keys. So you used an H to move left, an L to move right, a K to move up, and a J to move down. And Unix had games, and if you were playing games, um, you would use these keys to move around. Uh, so that's how I learned to move around on a Unix machine, both in Unix games and in the VI editor. So I can kind of just put my finger on those four keys, which if you look are right next to each other on the keyboard. Uh, it's just kind of second nature. A lot of times, you know, I, if somebody says, what's the up key, you know, I'd have to think, okay, um, I use my second finger, okay, look at the keyboard, okay, that's K. Uh, just because it's kind of second nature to me, I've been doing this since uh, probably the very early 1980s. Uh, so those still work, you can move around, like I said, try your arrow keys, if the arrow keys work. Uh, great that's probably going to be more what you're familiar with um, these days if you want to move around a screen at a time you can use control F to go forward one screen which would be further down in your program if you need to back up for whatever reason you can use a control B uh, to go back a screen uh, the next command, a lot of times you're going to want to, you're writing your program, you're editing it, maybe you quit to go eat dinner, or you come back, you bring it into the editor, and you want to go to the end of the file. So instead of holding the arrow key down or doing a whole bunch of um, control F's, you can simply do a capital G. The G stands for go to. And just G by itself is going to be go to the end of the file. Um, another thing um, kind of depends on what I'm doing whether or not I use this but I decided to put it on this uh, presentation is capital L which will go to the last line on the screen and position you on that line at the first character position. Uh, some miscellaneous commands. Um, this is not as necessary as it was when, when you had um, dial-up lines, but the system or some other user on the system may send you a message and it may just appear right in the middle of your program and make it look like your program's all messed up, uh, when in reality it's just what's being displayed on the screen is not what you would like it to be. Uh, but in all Unix uh, full screen programs, Control L is redraw screen. So if it ever kind of gets jumbled or shifted or overwritten for any reason, you can do a Control L as opposed to like quitting the editor and going back in. Um, as far as going to a specific line in your program, I've already told you how you can do that from the command line with for example the plus 44 option to the VI command. If you're already in VI, if you say colon number carriage return, so if you do colon 44 return, it'll take you to line 44, or you can type 44 capital G. So anytime you put a number in front of a VI command, it's called a repetition factor. Uh, and 44 go to would be interpreted as go to line 44. 
Sometimes you want to search. Let's say you know, for example, you get an error message that you misspelled a variable name. Uh, you can use the slash command. So you type slash a pattern you want to search for and hit return. Uh, that will search forward for the specified pattern. If you need to search backwards, then instead of using forward slash, you would use question mark. And a lot of times you want to search for a string, then you want to search for it again, you want to search for it again. Uh, VI has a shortcut, if you will, that basically when you're searching, if the pattern is omitted, it will search in the direction specified, you know, forward for slash, backwards for question mark, for the last pattern that was um, searched for. Um, so once you type the pattern, you can simply go slash return, slash return, slash return until you find the occurrence of the pattern that you are looking for. Control G gives you information about the file. It'll tell you how many lines are in the file, what line you're on. Sometimes it'll tell you how many characters are in the file. It'll tell you whether or not you've made a modification uh, to the file since it was last saved or since you took it into the editor and that type of thing. So that's sometimes handy. Uh, tells you the file name as well if I didn't mention that. Uh, the next thing we've already alluded to this a little bit is adding to a file and adding to a file is basically going into insert mode and here's some of the ways you can do that <coughs> so I talked about the A command which stands for append uh, basically what it does is it, it takes you into insert mode inserting to the right of the current character so wherever the cursor is positioned you press an A and it's going to move over one character opening up a space if there is other characters on the line uh, that you are editing. Um, another common way is insert. Um, it takes you into insert mode but it inserts at the current cursor position. So if you're over the first character of a word for example and you hit I and start typing it's going to push that whole word um, to the right as you type. The other command I mentioned briefly was open. Um, we talked about Unix being case sensitive. Uh, what I'm going to show you now is a very common thing in VI. So there's an open command which is lowercase o and if you're on a line and you press open it's going to shift any lines below that down one, give you a blank line immediately after the line you're on, put you in insert mode and move the cursor to the first character of that line. So notice that I have after underscored or underlined there. The reason I do that is there is also a capital O command. It is also the open command. It's going to do the exact same thing. The difference is it's going to open the line above your current or before your current line. So here's an example of where lowercase o and capital O are the same command open but yet they behave slightly different depending upon whether you use the lowercase or uppercase version. Another thing you might want to do is replace text. Maybe you copy and pasted a loop and the loop control variable was X and you want to use Y and you want to go through and, and replace um, all occurrences of X with Y for example. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do that since I gave you a simple case where it's a single letter you can use the R command which and then type a character and whatever character the cursor's over will be replaced with the character you type right after the R command. So in the example I laid out, you would move over an X and hit RY. And it'll keep you in command mode, but replace uh, the character underneath the cursor. Um, if you have a, several characters you want to replace, 
Um, there are different ways you can do that. Of course, you could hit the delete character key, which we'll talk about in a moment, until you delete everything you want. Then you could go into insert mode, and then you could type whatever new text you wanted, and then you could hit escape to get back to command mode. Um, there is a replace command that is capital R, and basically what that does is that puts you in overtype mode. So as you type characters, the cursor moves to the right, and when you type the next character, it replaces the character under the cursor. And it will stay in that overtype mode up until the point that you press the escape key. Now then, uh, deleting text. Um, kind of in its simplest form, like I was talking about before, which was deleting a single character. That is the character that is under the cursor. You can use a lowercase x for that, so that deletes the current location. If there are characters to the right of the character, or, or sorry, the current location, it will shift them all to the left. Um, sometimes you want to delete from where you are to the end of the line. The way you can do that is with um, capital D. Um, it deletes from here, and here is the current cursor location, to the end of the line. Uh, if you say DD, that deletes the current line, so that deletes one line. Earlier, I told you you could put a repetition factor or a repeat factor in front of commands. So the next command is an example of that. So if I type 5DD, it's basically going to issue the DD command five times. So that interprets to delete five lines, in particular the line I'm on and the four lines after it. Sometimes you make a mistake and in modern applications you have an undo. Sometimes you have infinite undos and, and you know if you undo too many times you can do a redo and go back. Um, VI has an undo command which is U. Um, some versions of VI you can only undo the last thing you did. So like if you deleted a line and hit U that line would come back. If you hit U again the line would go away. If you hit U again the line would come back because you're only able to undo the last thing. Um, in other versions of VI, doing undo will undo the last thing you did. Doing undo again would do two things ago, three things ago, etc. So you might just have to kind of play around with the undo command on whatever version of Unix or Linux you're on with whatever editor you are using. Another handy thing we do on modern computers is copy, cut, and paste. Um, in VI, it's referred to as yanking and putting. Yanking is taking lines and putting them in a buffer somewhere. Putting is taking that buffer and placing it in the file you're editing. So there are lots of different ways um, that you can do that. If you need to yank a single line, you can say YY, and that's basically copy. It's going to put a copy in the buffer, but it's not going to modify your file. If you wanted to copy three lines, you would say 3YY, that would yank three lines. So, like I said, yanking is copying. Um, there are some commands, I don't have this in the presentation, but for example, the dd command that we just talked about, when it deletes a line, there's an implied put it in the buffer. So doing a dd is kind of the equivalent of a modern day cut. Uh, when you have something in the buffer and you want to put it somewhere, you use the put command, which is P. Uh, kind of like open, a lowercase p will put the contents of the buffer after the current line. And a capital P will put the contents of the buffer before the current line. 
Now then, um, want to talk about quitting and or saving. So you've gone in and you've created a file, you've edited a file, uh, maybe you went in and, and basically messed the file up and you don't want to save it. So for quitting and saving, uh, you've probably heard most modern applications do an auto save every five minutes or something like that. But you may have heard when you started learning about computers that somebody said you should save often. So that if you lose power or you somehow damage your file, really mess it up, um, you can go back to a point in time where you were happy with the contents of the file. And basically save often in VI equates to colon W, which is write. So colon W carriage return will write the contents of the file. Uh, or I'm sorry, what you have in the editor to a file on your machine. And it will leave you in VI. Um, if you want to save the file and then quit VI, you can use the, the editor commands WQ together. So colon WQ, carriage return, will write the file out and then quit uh, the editor. Uh, the way I prefer to do it and the equivalent to doing colon WQ is capital Z capital Z. I just think that's easier and, and quicker to type. Now then, um, if you mess the file up and you want to quit out of it, or maybe you went into the wrong file and want to quit out of the editor uh, because it's the wrong file, you can do colon Q. And colon Q will quit VI as long as the file is unmodified. That means either you just went in and you've made no changes to it, or you just saved it and have not made any modifications since that save. If you've really screwed the file up and want to quit without saving your changes, um, you have to be what I call a little persistent, which is colon Q exclamation point. I really do want to quit. I don't care that I've um, modified this file. So those are a few ways that you might get out of uh, VI. Okay, so that's kind of my discussion of Unix editors and a handful of commands that I think will allow you to use it effectively. Uh, want to talk about um, Nano really, really quickly. Um, often you will get into it using um, the command um, uh, okay things were a little bit out of uh, order sorry about that so nano is uh, nano is another editor or nano is another editor and as I said it's an enhanced free um, Pico clone um, it is a full screen editor and when you invoke it it's going to look like um, what I'm showing here on the screen. So at the top it's going to have the version. Um, it says it's a new buffer. I think the file name would appear there if you were editing an existing file. And over at the top right it tells me that the file is modified. And then the nice thing about Nano is down at the bottom it has in this case the 12 most common commands that you might want to do while you're editing. You might want to get help, you might want to exit, you might want to save the file, you might want to load uh, a file into this program, you may want to cut text, um, you might want to go to a particular line number. So it's going to tell you uh, down at the bottom common things uh, to do. Uh, this looks like the next slide's a little bit out of order. I apologize for that. Uh, but basically, if you're in input mode and, and at the same time, you can move around with arrow keys. So that makes it more like Word is today. Again, the most commonly used commands are at the bottom of the screen. 
Uh, one of those commands is if you want to exit, you can do a control X. And when you do that, it's going to be nice and basically say, hey, you've modified the buffer. Do you really want to save it? If you say no, I'm going to throw the changes away. Or you can say yes and actually save it. Or if you didn't really mean to do control X, you can do a control C, uh, which cancels out of that and takes you back to the editor. So that right there is a super quick introduction to nano but i think that's more than enough to um, allow you to use nano effectively so that's the end of my presentation on unix editors